table-driven chart of accounts with up to six segments that identify funds, functional areas, programs, funding sources, grants, sites, and account codes. The goal of defining your chart of account structure is to provide more meaningful financial data and help your organization be more accountable and transparent. The chart of accounts is the key element in the proper utilization of the Fast Funds system. The account definition defines the number of segments used in your account, the segment length, and definition. Each segment can be up to six digits long. Only your company administrator has access to the administration menu and company setup to create your chart of accounts definition. To define your chart of account structure, click the gear icon on the top right of the Fast Fund online window. From the administration menu, select Company Setup, then Account Settings. The default account structure has three segments made up of a two digit fund, a three digit cost center, and a four digit object code for your assets, liabilities, net assets, revenue, and expenses. We recommend setting up the segment length to accommodate the number of funds and cost centers you'll need. So, if you have three funds, you only need a single-digit fund segment. If you have 10 programs, you only need a two-digit cost center segment. If you outgrow your account structure, Arrays can reset the account definition to meet your future needs. The first segment represents your funds. Each fund you set up will have its own statement of activities, statement of financial position, and at fiscal year end, each fund's excess or deficiency is closed out to its own net asset account. The middle cost center segments are the most important since they represent the number of levels for reporting your organization's revenue and expenses. A single cost center segment will create separate revenue and expense reports for each cost center. A two-tiered cost center structure will generate two levels of revenue and expense reports. The top level is the total of all primary cost centers. And the second level is the detail of the primary and secondary cost centers. A three-tiered structure will generate three levels of reporting with totals for each primary cost center, the total of the primary and secondary cost centers with a third level of detail. Here are examples of using cost centers. The first example has a fund and a single cost center to identify programs and the object code segment. This will provide proper segregation of revenue and expenses, first by funds and then by functional areas, your mission-based program activities, and your support services, including management in general, and fundraising. If you don't need additional levels of reporting for your program activity by funding source, grant, department, or site, then the three-segment account structure will work for your organization. The next example shows a two-tiered cost center structure. Here, program is the primary cost center, and funding source is the second cost center. Management in general receives funding from the three different funding sources. Education receives funding from three funding sources. After School receives funding from three funding sources. Fast Fund automatically combines the activity in the primary and secondary cost centers to give you a total of all revenue and expenses for the program, with a breakdown by the second-tiered funding source. A three-tiered cost center is necessary when you have multiple third cost centers that need to be reported on separately. Like the two-tiered cost center, Fast Fund automatically combines the activity from the third cost center with the second and the second to the first for three levels of reporting. The final example shows a chart of accounts that requires three linked cost centers. Here, we see the second cost centers for funding sources are linked to more than one third cost center for sites. Once you have determined your cost center structure, you can define the cost center length and labels. Select the cost center length from the drop-down list. Select the segment length from one digit to six digits. Select the label for the first cost center. Once you select a label for the first cost center, that label name does not appear in the second and third cost center label selections. The cost center label can be changed at any time. Follow the same procedure if you're using the second and third cost center segments. The object code segment defines your assets, liabilities, net assets, revenue, and expenses. Because Fast Funds segregates all your financial activity by funds and cost centers, you only need one object code number for each revenue and expense account setup. For example, if you define 5,000 as your salary's expense, you'll be able to create multiple salary's expenses for each of your cost center levels. In this example, we show the salary expense for both a single cost center segment and a two-tiered cost center segment. As you can see, there is only one 5,000 account for salaries. For the object code, you have the choice of using a standalone object code or an object code with a sub-account. 
Let's look at an example of an object code account with and without subaccounts. There are three types of payroll taxes paid by an organization, Social Security, Medicare, and state unemployment. You can easily segregate the expenses with three different object code numbers. If you use subaccounts, you must first define a parent object code account for payroll taxes, and then add subaccounts to the parent account for the three different expenses. Both ways will have separate accounts for the payroll tax expenses. With FastFund's Set Manager for financial statements, you can group object codes together into summary totals or group them together with a subtotal, with or without subaccounts. So there is no need to have a subaccount to get totals for multiple accounts. Once you have defined your chart of account structure, click Save. Under the Account Number Definition section, there are default account ranges for your object codes. FastFund follows standard accounting principles with the numbering of your object codes. The default settings have assets starting with 1,000, liabilities start with 2,000, net assets start with 3,000, income starts with 4,000, and expenses start with 5,000 and go through 9,000. The preset ranges for all object codes follow generally accepted accounting principles. Preset account ranges help keep your financial activity in proper order for printing all accounting reports and financial statements. If you change the start range of any object code classification, the end range of the previous account classification will be updated. The last step in defining your account structure is defining the four system control accounts. FastFund has four system accounts that manage your cash receipts, check printing, interfund transactions, and the year-end closing entry. Undeposited funds is used for all cash receipts entered in accounting and fundraising. The undeposited funds number must fall within the current asset account range. Checks to be printed is used for scheduling checks to be printed in accounting. The checks to be printed must fall within the current asset account range. The fund balancing account is a system generated account that is created automatically for every fund you create. When any transaction in FastFund is posted to more than one fund, a due to, due from other funds entry is automatically created to keep your funds in balance. The fund balancing account must fall within the current liabilities account range. The net asset closing account is a system generated account that is created automatically for every fund you create. The net asset closing account is used to post the year end closing entry for each fund's excess or deficiency. The net asset closing must fall within the net asset account range. After editing your account ranges, click Save. After defining your chart of accounts format, the next steps in creating your chart of accounts are adding your account segments and linking the segments together to create a full account number.